Anita lay on the hospital bed, her face pale and her breathing shallow. The doctor and her fiancé, Michael, stood by her side, both looking grim. I'm sorry, Anita, the doctor said, his voice soft. The cancer has spread too far. We can't do anything more for you. You have three days to live. Anita's eyes widened in shock and fear. Three days. She whispered. Michael's expression hardened. I'm sorry, Anita, he said coldly, turning to leave. I can't watch you die like this. Anita felt her heart shatter as Michael walked out of the hospital room. Michael, please don't leave me, she pleaded, tears streaming down her face. But Michael didn't turn back, didn't even spare her a second glance as he left. Anita was left alone, facing her own mortality. She wondered how she could face the next three days without the love and support of the man she thought she would spend the rest of her life with. The next day, Michael invited Jennifer over to Anita's mansion. As Jennifer walked into Anita's mansion, Michael greeted her with a smile on his face. Hey, you made it, he said as they sat down. Is everything okay? Jennifer asked, noticing the hint of excitement in Michael's voice. Yes, everything is perfect, he replied, Anita is dead. Jennifer's face twisted in shock and confusion. What? When did this happen? Just recently, Michael lied, holding back a grin. And now, everything she owned is mine. Jennifer's eyes widened in disbelief. You mean? Yes, Michael interrupted. I'll finally have everything I've ever wanted. As they sat on the couch, Michael began to tell Jennifer his plans for the mansion and all of Anita's possessions. But Jennifer couldn't help feeling uneasy about the whole situation. Anita lay on the hospital bed, tears streaming down her face as she clutched onto her Bible. Dear God, please have mercy on me, she whispered. Heal me, Lord. I don't want to die. I have so much to live for. As she prayed, she heard the door open and the doctor entered the room. How are you feeling, Anita? He asked. Anita looked up at him, her eyes red from crying. Doctor, please tell me there's still hope. I don't want to die, she pleaded. The doctor sighed and said, Anita, I'm afraid the prognosis isn't good. You have a very rare and aggressive form of cancer. We've done all we can, but there's nothing more we can do. You have at most three days left. Anita felt as if the whole world had crashed down on her. Three days. That was all she had left. She felt hopeless and helpless. Doctor, please, there must be something else you can do. Some other treatment or medication. She begged. I'm sorry, Anita. We've exhausted all our options. Your only hope now is to spend your remaining days with your loved ones, the doctor said sympathetically. Anita felt tears prick at her eyes again as the doctor left the room. She clutched her Bible closer to her chest and prayed once more. Lord, please help me. Show me your mercy and heal me. Please don't let me die. She continued to pray, tears streaming down her face, until she eventually drifted off into a fitful sleep. Anita drifted off into a deep sleep, and in her dream, she saw a man dressed in white. The man approached her and introduced himself to be an angel. Anita was stunned to see the angel and fell to her knees in awe. The angel reached out and lifted her up, telling her not to be afraid. I have come to heal you, the angel said. Anita felt a warmth spread through her body as the angel laid his hands on her. She could feel the sickness leaving her body as the angel conducted what felt like a surgical operation on her. When Anita woke up, she was surprised to find that the pain and sickness were gone. She felt strong and healthy, and knew that Jesus had healed her. She immediately called for the doctor and told him what had happened. I want to be discharged from the hospital, Anita said. I am healed, and I want to go home. The doctor was amazed at Anita's sudden recovery and agreed to discharge her. Anita was excited to finally be back in the comfort of her own home. She had never been happier to see the familiar surroundings of her mansion. However, as she entered her room, her joy quickly turned to confusion and anger. There, in her own bed, were Michael and Jennifer, cuddled up. Anita stood at the door in shock, unable to believe what she was seeing. Michael and Jennifer were startled by the sudden appearance of Anita. 
Michael quickly got up, trying to explain himself. Anita, it's not what you think. We were just. He trailed off, unable to come up with a reasonable explanation. Anita interrupted him, how dare you? I was on my deathbed and you were here, enjoying yourself with another woman. And now that I am well, you have the guts to come to my home and carry on like nothing happened. Get out, both of you. Jennifer tried to speak up. Anita, I'm so sorry. Michael didn't tell me you were still alive. Please forgive us. Anita was too angry to listen to their pleas for forgiveness. Get out. She repeated, her voice trembling with rage. Michael and Jennifer quickly left the room, leaving Anita alone to process what had just happened. She couldn't believe that Michael had abandoned her in the hospital and then moved on so quickly with another woman. She felt hurt and betrayed, but at the same time, she was grateful to be alive and healthy again. Believing and trusting God in any situation is key to living a successful and fulfilling life. It is important to hold on to the promises of God and believe that He is able to do all things, even the impossible. The story of Anita teaches us that in times of crisis and challenges, we must never lose faith in God. Despite being given a death sentence by the doctor, Anita chose to believe in God's power to heal and restore her health. And truly, she was miraculously healed. Therefore, my advice to everyone watching this is to hold on to your faith in God and believe in His power to deliver you from any situation. But also, be mindful of the people you keep around you. Surround yourself with people who will lift you up and encourage you in your journey of faith, not those who will drag you down. Trust in God and choose your friends wisely. May God give you the grace to navigate through life's challenges and come out victorious.